I always like to start my talks with an introduction. I'm not sure if anyone here knew that. Uh, Luke Parker, Kaiba, Kaiba Nerf, uh, developer of full chain membership proofs uh, in the plus plus variant, and of course, Sarai, current talk. I'm also a Magic Monero Fund committee member. If you want to donate to Monero development and get US tax deductions, Magic is a 501c3 charity. Uh, I'm also privileged enough to be a six time speaker at MoneroCon, which is really meaningful to me. Uh, but don't worry, everyone. This is my last talk. This is my fourth talk of the event, so you won't have to hear from me anymore. Uh, but if you're a fan of extrapolating, as this XKCD tells us to do, I'm so happy to announce by 2030, I'll be 100 of MoneroCon's projected 75 talks. So don't worry. Just wait till 2030 and I'll be on here all day, guys. All right, um, to start out this talk, just another disclaimer, just like my last talk. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, nor am I a financial advisor. I'm not your lawyer, nor am I your financial advisor. And none of this is legal or financial advice. I'm not going to be held accountable for any of this. This really is just describing a code base I've been working on, and I make absolutely no further claims. All right, so Sarai, I've been working on it uh, two and a half years now, I want to say. It's a decentralized exchange, and it's aiming to just be an automatic, robust platform that should work largely without human intervention. And the main goal of that is simply to prevent the next FTX. Now, when I started working on it two plus years ago, I wouldn't have said the next FTX. I would have picked another example, but 2024, we're here to prevent the next FTX. Um, so yeah, at launch, it's going to be supporting Monero, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. And it uses its own network to order swaps. So when you want to do a swap, say you want to swap Monero for Bitcoin, you're going to send Monero. Uh, and the Sarai network is going to record that event. It's going to say, hey, this Monero was sent to the Sarai network. Let's, we want to trigger a swap with it. It's going to, on the Sarai network, actually trigger the swap, determine the value out, and send Bitcoin out accordingly. Um, it also uses its own coin for routing and security. Uh, what that means is when you swap Monero to Bitcoin, you're actually swapping Monero, Sarai, Bitcoin. Uh, that just kind of unifies all of the liquidity. It stops fragmented pools. You don't have to worry about, oh, well, I want to swap Bitcoin to USDT number five on this specific network. Is there liquidity? Yeah, as long as both of the coins independently have liquidity, you'll be fine. You don't have to worry about any of the weird combinations you may get. Uh, we also use it for security, our validator stakes for I. Uh, in the part I'm really proud about, but has also made me very, very poor over these years, uh, no pre-mine, no ICO, no dev fund, and no VCs. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I kind of just wanted to take it as a bit of a timeline, like what's going to happen, because hopefully Sarai uh, will be hitting its 1.0 release this year. That's a bit optimistic of me, but I'm finally going to be very public about saying that. And with that, I kind of wanted to let people know what we're going to be looking at when the any network goes live and what that's going to be. So how will Sarai get started? There are going to be a set of Genesis validators, you know, trusted community members respected to be in that role. I know KickWallet led by the mighty Vic, who definitely didn't ask for an explicit shout out during this talk, um, is going to be one of those nodes, so hand to them when we have the time. We're also going to be, um, sorry, um, when the network launches, we have these Genesis validators, uh, users, that's hopefully y'all, but no pressure, uh, you'll just be able to provide Monero, Bitcoin, Ether, or DAI as liquidity. Those are the coins we're initially supporting at launch. If you want your favorite coin to be integrated, you're welcome to suggest it. We're, I'm not personally taking more on before launch. We have to get to launch, guys. Um, but yeah, if you provide liquidity, uh, you're, you would get an airdrop of Sarai, the native coin. Uh, at the time this airdrop occurs, that's going to be 100% of the distribution because this is no pre-mine, no ICO, no dev fund, et cetera. Uh, the coins provided as liquidity in the matching airdropped Sarai these form the initial liquidity positions. A uh, good time for me to clarify, Sarai is not an order book exchange. It uses liquidity pools as popularized by uh, Uniswap on Ethereum. So what this means is that users provide liquidity, they provide it in terms of both coins, say Monero and Sarai, and then when a user wants to do a swap, 
it looks at how much uh, Monero is in the pool and how much Shirai is in the pool, and it calculates a price based off the current ratio. Um, and then, yeah, once we do this airdrop and we now have a bunch of liquidity in the pools, uh, we start swaps. People will be able to swap from Monero to Bitcoin, vice versa, in a decentralized fashion, which will be great. Um, wow, apparently we jumped right into economic security. I thought the slide was a bit later. Um, so the main question becomes, how do we secure this? You know, it's this decentralized system. How do we stop a hundred no-name anonymous accounts from joining and running off of all the Monero and so on? So Sarai itself relies on economic security. Uh, economic security is where our validators, whoever they are, stake more in value than the coins they secure. So because they're staking more, uh, yeah, they could misbehave, but they are going to lose more than they could gain, so long as our modeling holds. And because they're going to lose more than they stand to gain, they're really just stupid if they misbehave, I have to be honest. Um, accordingly, uh, when the network starts, 100% of our Sarai was just airdropped to our lovely users and no one has done any staking, and we have not reached this point where validators are staking more in value than they secure. So we refer to this time period as pre-economic security. No one has staked yet, there is value on the network, we, we aren't economically secure just yet, guys. So the goal of the network in part of you know, becoming this successful decentralized project is to achieve economic security as soon as possible and actually get validators to participate in the network and stake Sarai and create a successfully secure system. So pre-economic security, uh, anyone who wants to be a validator, contribute to decentralization, earn emissions from the network, uh, they will just be able to swap any of the four coins we support directly to freshly minted Sarai. So instead of uh, swapping to Sarai via the existing liquidity pools, which would really mess with the ratios and create some bad long-term effects in my opinion, uh, we will mint Sarai directly to their staked position. Uh, they cannot just unstake this immediately and uh, swap it into the pools. Uh, the stake is locked. It can only be unlocked into capacity in the economic security. We don't let validators unstake if it would threaten the health of the network. Um, and since we're pre-economic security, technically the network's health is threatened until we achieve economic security. So anyone will be able to swap to this freshly minted Sarai, which can't just be swapped through the pools and actually does have to be staked to their validator. Uh, and this kind of just leaves us with surplus Bitcoin. You know, if someone swaps in one Bitcoin and they get staked behind their validator, well, we freshly minted Sarai. We didn't actually use that Bitcoin for anything. So now we just have one Bitcoin sitting there. And what do we do with that? We kind of have money, guys. Anyone have ideas? Um, so our solution to that was we form protocol-owned liquidity. We take that one Bitcoin, and we take half of it, so 0 0.5 Bitcoin, and we swap it to Sarai via the existing pools. And now we have a balanced amount. We have half a Bitcoin and half a Bitcoin of value of Sarai. And with that, we can add liquidity back into the Sarai protocol, which isn't owned by any user, but is owned by the protocol itself. Accordingly, it's not going to be removed. I mean, technically, it could be removed with some evolution of the protocol rule set, but that's not expected, blah, 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 blah. Basically, it's going to be liquidity there till the end of time. And since it's going to be there till the end of time, even if all of our users decide they no longer want to provide liquidity for whatever reason, the network itself will still have liquidity and will still be able to facilitate swaps. So it's just one of the things that makes it robust, and it's another way that the Sarai network can ensure uh, long-term standing. Uh, with regards to users' liquidity, if you provide liquidity, uh, you can remove that at any time. We're not here to, or I'm not here to trap you in anything. If you want to provide liquidity a month in, you're just not feeling the love, yeah, sure, remove your liquidity. Uh, that will forfeit the airdrop Sarai. You do have to stick around for that, but if you just want to get whatever you contributed back out, yes, there's no lockup period. Uh, and during this time, validators earn emissions to their stake, but as I said, they cannot unstake because there is no capacity in the network's uh, health for them to unstake into. So eventually, all goes well, we either uh, we get enough validators to stake Sarai and we become economically secure. This switches us over to post-economic security. 
uh, and that's when the airdrop Sarai starts to trickle feed. We're currently looking at trickle feeding it over a year. So let's say, you know, half a year in, we managed to reach economic security. No, we aren't just unlocking, you know, 50% of the Sarai supply that any user can just suddenly remove and swap into the market. No, we'd be looking at trickle feeding 0.3% a day over a year just to ensure it's a overtime distribution and give people time to think about what they want to do, react, respond, so on and so on. And during this time, all of this time actually, swaps have been going on, hopefully demonstrating that the Sarai economic model is viable in the long term. Uh, we take those swap fees and they do go to liquidity providers, yet some swap fees are also used to burn Sarai, which is important because like Monero, we don't have a finite supply. If we believe validators should be rewarded, so we do emit to validators. And with that, yes, we are an inflationary coin, but since we are burning some of our swap fees, we either will balance that out, achieve deflation, uh, given enough successful use, or will just ideally be mildly inflationary. Uh, this is kind of my summary slide, because I understand that might be a bit convoluted, and I apologize if it got a bit too depth, too in-depth with exactly how the economics timeline of Sarai is going to go. But if you're an end user and you're just like, what does all of this mean? Uh, you can swap Bitcoin to Monero and vice versa. And Ether's also in there if you like Ether. Decentralized fashion. There's not me standing over the protocol. There's not five guys in some boardroom. It's a decentralized protocol made up of decentralized collection of notes. Uh, if you have XMR, uh, Bitcoin, or Ether sitting around, you can provide it as liquidity, earn some fees on it. Uh, and if you want to be more active, you can stake Sarai as a validator and contribute to that decentralization. Uh, any questions? <laughs>